Hey guys, welcome back. So today we have some pretty exciting news. At least it was exciting for me, especially when I first learned about it and it going into production. And what I'm talking about is this little fella right here. Now, as you guys may know already, the US military adopted the M5 rifle, which they call the Spear. And that rifle is something that many people want to get their hands on, but they're just not really available. They did a special release. And I think the thing sold for something like $20,000 with a gun, a suppressor and some other stuff. But for most of us, that's an improbability, at least for any time soon. But much like the SCAR, we had the heavy and the light. Well, SIG was secretly working on a light version of the M5 Spear, and that's what this rifle is sitting here in front of me. This is the SIG MCX Spear LT, or the light version of the M5. It chambers 5.56, and it is an evolutionary step up from the original MCX, which we first got a taste of in 2015. And we'll talk a little bit about this rifle and how it compares to what we know as the current generation SIG Virtus. And then we're gonna delve into the SIG Spear LT, which you again see here sitting in front of me on top of it with the Tango 6 uh, SIG Optic, which is also used by the US military. So let's dive into this thing, take a look at some of the interesting features, compare it to the existing vertices that are out there and see where some of those tweaks were made to the gun and what those tweaks are. A lot of folks ask me, how can I get involved in the firearms business in that particular community? And one of the best ways to do that is to become a gunsmith. Every gunsmith I know is just overbooked with work. It's a very good living. And so if you would like to become a gunsmith, you need to go to a gunsmithing school or become an apprentice for an existing gunsmith. But Modern Gun School is an accredited college that also works with veterans in the GI Bill, where you can go and get a degree from accredited college in gunsmithing and then go out and start your own gunsmithing business, which I think is a really great option. Again, throughout my entire life, gunsmiths have always been able to earn a really good living, assuming they have a really strong work ethic. So please check out Modern Gun School. I do have a link in the video description below. This is the early generation or first generation SIG MCX. And this rifle, as with most first generation type firearms, had its teething issues. But SIG continued to evolve the rifle and it replaced their 5.56 series of rifles, which were based on the SIG 550 and its derivatives. And so when this thing first popped up, of course, everybody was really interested in it, myself included. And this was a really interesting step forward for SIG in the rifle marketplace. But again, as most first, genera uh, first generation weapons have, it had its teething issues. There's a nothing fancy video out there where uh, you could see the entire internals of the gun basically munching itself. But, um, and there's some speculation that perhaps it wasn't assembled correctly or whatever, but SIG continued to evolve the product line. And this rifle is the lightest of the three guns that we're gonna show you out uh, here today. And we will post up a picture here. They'll show you the weights of each of the three rifles, which represent basically the three generations of the gun, even though there are some sub variations in there. But this is the first MCX lightweight. This is the uh, famous Kate Moss stock and it's all aluminum, this really lightweight aluminum handguard out here. And I've enjoyed shooting this gun over the years. Now this one, I also have the 300 blackout kit for it, but the gas system and all sorts of stuff, the bolt carrier groups, all that stuff would get reworked by SIG over the years. Now, keeping in mind that this one was launched in 2015. So this original rifle would evolve into my baby, a rifle I love very much. If you watch the channel, you already know that. And this is the SIG Virtus. This one's in flat dark earth. It's a Cerakoted finish. Uh, underneath it is a black anodized SIG Virtus, and then they would apply the Cerakote to it. Most of these rifles that made it out into the public would be gray. And then if you were in law enforcement, you would get the black version of the rifle and everybody would clamor for the flat dark earth versions like this one. And so when I had the opportunity to grab one, I did. Now I have this rifle all kitted out with, uh, you know, the tools that I prefer to have it uh, set up with. I have a primary arms three power optic on here that's about the size of a red dot sight, like an MRO. Uh, I have a LaRue quick detach mount on here, which I'll probably swap out here a little bit later for a slightly smaller mount. And then I have a light switch, my scout light right there, flip up backup sights with the QD optic. I can get it off there quickly and use my backup sights. And I don't currently have a suppressor on it, but you can suppress the rifle. So this rifle uh, really 
man, it won me over. I went from an AR-15 to this because I've been testing the rifles extensively since they first came out. Now, again, there's a lot of different versions of this gun. As a matter of fact, the most current version of this rifle has a completely different stock than what you see on here right now, but they've maintained that folding capability throughout the product line. So the guns are a gas piston system. So you have a short piston up here. You have an arm that extends off the bolt carrier and this piston will tap that bolt carrier and cycle the action. It has a two position gas regulator out here. So you have a high and low setting essentially. And it uses standard 5.56 P mags or military Stenag magazines. The guns, at least in my experience, have been accurate, reliable, but just a little bit heavy. And that's what most people complain about when they talk about the Virtus, its weight. Now keep in mind, the original version was considerably lighter than this particular rifle. The Virtus as it stands now without all the stuff on it is about 7.9 pounds. So you'll see how that contrasts between the original MCX and the new uh, Spear LT that we're gonna talk about here in just a moment. But again, very reliable gun, very easy, pleasant shooting gun, but just a little bit porky. And so while SIG was working on the M5 for the US military, they likely had a development team working on this particular gun. You'll notice it has more of a gold hue to it versus the, the flat color of the Cerakote finish on the Virtus. That's because this gun has been anodized versus Cerakoted. And we'll go over the features here in a moment, but one thing that's most notable about this gun is that it is lighter than its predecessor. But when it's all stripped down, it's still not as light as the original MCX, but the weight savings that they've applied to this new design is definitely a welcomed change. But they made some other tweaks that we'll talk about in this video. So let's do a deep dive into the design and some of the, the changes that you'll find in the uh, Spear LT versus the current generation of Sig Virtus out there that a lot of you guys already have uh, seen videos on or own yourself. So here we have the earlier Sig Virtus. This would be the latest generation before transferring to the new Spear LT, at least as far as I know. Sig makes a lot of rolling changes. So if you look back here, starting off with the stock, you'll notice the stock is considerably different. Now this type of a stock has been used by Sig before on the Sig Rattler, and it's what I call the Kate Moss 2.0. It's a very lightweight cut stock, and it is you know a little bit shorter in a, a fixed length versus this one, which has a much larger aluminum tube, if you will, right here that the stock rides on that is of adjustable length. Now, will this stock fit on here and vice versa? Yes, it will, right? It's just a Picatinny rail back here and they can swap. The pistol grips, things like that will, will swap. The charging handles and stuff like that will swap. So if we start moving forward and get into the receivers, we're going to start looking at where SIG made some improvements to the weight reduction of the gun, where they made some additional cuts and some updates that they made. So if you take a look on the original Virtus, this is a QD mount that's on both sides of the lower receiver. This is just aluminum. So what happens when you put a steel sling swivel into an aluminum receiver and you use it a lot? Well, that steel is gonna start eating away at the aluminum and eventually this is gonna become very sloppy or break potentially and then your lower receiver's trashed. What SIG has done on the new uh, Spear LT is they've put steel inserts in there so that now it's steel on steel, you don't have to worry about damaging your lower receiver. And on the right side, let's just kind of move forward, talk about some of the differences. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice, if we can get an angle of it, if not, I'll try to get pictures, there's a, quite a bit more overhang that was designed into this upper receiver on the original design, and that has been reduced to where now it's just barely, I can just barely feel it tactically by running my finger across it. So um, you'll see that they've machined this down flat. This is more material right here. And we're just talking, you know, just a few thousands of material, but that's what SIG was doing, is just taking off weight everywhere they could, but still trying to keep as much compatibility with the original design as they could, at least in my opinion. So moving forward, we have those, we have this system, which is a subassembly, which can be taken out. This is polymer, earlier versions were aluminum. Here we have the bolt catch, which now allows you to lock the bolt open by pushing up on it, or drop the bolt by pushing down on it. And in doing that, they made some different cuts to the receiver. So if you look over here, this area has been beefed up on the Spear LT. And then this area has been machined down to accommodate this lever system. Everything else over here looks to be about the same. The forging marks are slightly different, but overall the triggers, stuff like that, 
are the same with a few different changes. The profile of the trigger shoe, for example, is different, but internally the trigger mechanisms are compatible and are pretty much the same. And if we look forward here, you'll notice there's a little bit of a relief cut here on the upper receiver. There's a much deeper relief cut on the Spear LT. We'll get into the handguard here in a second because this is a pretty significant change. Let's flip the rifles over and take a look at the other side so we can continue to look at where SIG has made some cuts, additional cuts to the new design to, uh, to alleviate a few ounces off the overall design. So we have big weight savings here in the stock. If you come forward, if you look at the original, you'll notice that you have that raised ridge here. Again, it, it overhangs the lower receiver and it doesn't start to cut out until much further forward on the new Spear LT. This is just machined flat all the way across and then you have just a slight hump back here. So they've saved that weight. If you look at the cutout here, it stops before the cam pen track, replaceable component. Here they've machined it all the way up till basically it's almost touching. So they've taken out some more aluminum there. Here we have a shallow cutout on the upper, on the original design. Here we have a much deeper and longer cutout on the Spear LT. Now, this is another significant change, at least in my mind. It looks pretty insignificant, but overall this is pretty big. So if you take a look at how the ping pong paddle on this is set up, it leaves this Ambi magazine release exposed. Come down to the new Spear LT, and they've taken this and moved it back, and you'll see now that it sets at about the same length as the magazine release. So now it's shielded from the user's finger. So now you'll know if you're on the ping pong paddle or if you're on the magazine release. Here, the potential to get the two confused uh, is, you know, tactically, it, by touching it, is, is a possibility. Here they've removed that. I'm sure that's from end user feedback. So the guns break down just like the originals. Matter of fact, you can uh, put the uppers on each other. So I can take this upper off, put it on the other lower, vice versa. But there are some significant changes to the bolt carrier design. The T-handle, all that stuff is the same. This is the new bolt carrier system, which we'll talk about here in a moment. And the T-handle. Let's go ahead and crack open the older Virtus. Take out the bolt carrier and the T-handle. So now let's delve into the internals of the guns and talk about the differences and the similarities and if these components are interchangeable between the two guns. The internals of the new gun make it a little bit easier for the end user to service it in the field. This is now easily separated, much like the original design of the original MCX, believe it or not, uh, but it's a completely different design. But now you can take these two apart. However, on the original design of the MCX, you could, this is a polymer piece, and you could take these rods out, take your recoil springs off. Now there's a pin that runs through there holding a metal end piece, but that's something that they had already done with the Virtus. So that's not changed, but I just wanted to point that out. Now on the Virtus that precedes the, the Spear LT, this just doesn't pull off, right? This is pinned in place and it's different. Also here is the firing pin safety. And back here, there's gonna be some changes to that design. You'll notice that there's no cut on top for that firing pin safety. It's been changed. The, to disassemble the firing pin, to take it out, you'd push here. It's a captive pin with a little O-ring in there. You'll notice that that pin is now at a different angle. And if you look at the left-hand side of the bolt, you can see that the, the safety mechanism has changed considerably. Up here, mostly the same, but a little bit different. The T-handle's identical. So the question is, I'm sure all of you are asking in your minds right now, and I'm kind of curious myself, but I already know the answer. Let me go ahead and put this back on. Now, this is the Virtus. This is the Spear LT bolt and carrier. Now, this is a SIG item. This is a T-handle that has the extended ears on it. You can buy these off the uh, SIG web store. That's where I picked it up from. But this is the standard T-handle that most vertices and the Spear LT would come with. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to put the charging handle in. And reassemble this bad guy here really quick. But I'm going to use the Spear LT's bolt and carrier unit. 
put it inside here. Now this may not be advisable. I didn't ask anybody at SIG if this was okay to do or not. I'm just doing it. I'm gonna put the gun together. Close it up. These pins are always really tight. Put some ears on. Take magazine. Put a round in it. And it locks open. So yes, the LT's bolt carrier assembly will work in the older Virtus. Now, will you be able to go and buy those parts to upgrade your rifle? I couldn't tell you. I mean, historically speaking, parts like that are very hard to come by. Parts that I'm talking about would be bolt carrier groups and things like that. And I'm sure everybody out there is going to be trying to upgrade their rifles with the latest and greatest in parts. So um, there will be that. Now, when we get into the trigger groups and things like that, guys, there's, there's no difference. It's pretty much the same trigger group, just a different trigger shoe on the new Spear LT. And I'll show you that here really quick. Again, now this is anodized. Keep in mind the other one's anodized black with flat dark earth paint over it. The reason this one is looks almost gold is because it's anodized that color. But the same trigger mechanism. Obviously, the bolt carry groups are interchangeable. Here you can now see the bolt hold, ambi, operating, and how that's cut out there. It's also worth noting that back here on the stock, there is a difference where the original design, you would grab the receiver with your thumb, lift up on the stock and fold it. And some folks would struggle with that if it was bone dry, not lubricated. It might you know, be hard to separate the two from that V wedge. Now you can just push a button and it folds very easily. And when it's in the folded position, it wants to stay there. It takes considerable effort to bring it out and then lock it in place so the stock's just not gonna flop around when it's folded. Looking at the original design that we have here, there's not a button, just a hinge, and you have to lift up and push down. I'm lifting up. See, this one's sticking, and then it folds over. So a little bit, a little bit more cumbersome, right? They've totally refined that system to where now it's just simply a matter of pushing the button and folding the stock. So a definite improvement. Now, quite possibly, you'll be able to pick these up at some point down the road. And yes, it would bolt on to your existing Virtus. With the original MCX and Virtus, to take the handguard off, all you had to do was push this front pin out and it would release the handguard so that it could push forward. It takes a lot of force sometimes to push it forward. Many times I'll just do this, tap it, and then the handguard will just literally slide right off. And it indexes on this track right here. On the bottom end, there is this little guy that the pin, the takedown pin passes through, and that's what holds it in place. So SIG changed that with the new handguard design. With the new handguard design, I've already taken one of the screws out, but you have the same underside. This is holding that little tab in place where the takedown pin runs through it, but now you have two screws on both sides of the receiver that you need to take out before you can remove that handguard. So you take the two screws out, and then this slides off very easily and the handguard comes off. So I'm not sure why that change was made. Maybe it was a military request if this thing is being considered by the military or a military, I don't know. But taking the handguard off the earlier design, let's take a look at those gas systems. Okay, look at the gas blocks. Don't wanna lose my screws there. You can see there's a different profile to the gas blocks. So the gas system has been changed somewhat. You can still take the barrels out the exact same way. Here you have two screws that pinch the barrel in place, and then you have a slot right here, a pin rides in that indexes the barrel. And then these two screws are also present on the new Spear LT. So a lot of changes, but not so many changes that you couldn't move parts back and forth. If you look at the profiles of the barrel, they look to be very similar. There's slightly different cuts. There's, um, you just take a look at that. It's just a slightly different profile, ever so slight, but we still have the one in seven twist in that different muzzle device. So it, can you put this new handguard on here? Well, let's find out. I haven't tested this, but I'm gonna say yes, you probably can. So this is the LT's handguard. Let's see if we can slide it on. <clears throat> 
it's running into something to keep it from going on. So uh, it would appear no, even though it's a very similar design. Perhaps this cut here is different. I don't know, but you could hear it run into something and stop. I can't put it on. Yeah, I don't want to force it any more than that. So if you're looking to put the Spear LT handguard on your existing Virtus, that quite possibly is a no-go. So now you can also see the lightning cuts <clears throat> that are made. I'm sorry, I'm losing my voice here, guys. You see the lightning cuts that are made here? Quite a bit different. And on the other side, you can see those lightning cuts. Big, big difference there. And then you also have a cut right here that's not present underneath the hand guards. So that's where those ounces have been saved, right? Mostly in those cuts to the receiver. And that's really interesting. And it's also interesting to see what parts are backwards compatible or cross compatible and which parts aren't. So yeah, pretty interesting. So let's talk a little bit more about the hand guards. Kind of, I kind of glossed over it in the last segment. So the hand guards are different in a number of different ways. So on the Virtus, we have two holes cut in the receiver here for different gas blocks. Apparently SIG will be standardizing on gas blocks on the different cartridges and things like that. You have this one big opening here now that gives you much easier access to the two position gas regulator on the end of the gas block. You'll also notice that this is a very angular, squarish type handguard and you don't have M-lock up here. The M-lock starts at the three o'clock and nine o'clock position and then again at the six o'clock position. With the new handguard on the Spear LT, we have M-lock up here M lock here. Now this is at a slight angle. This is at the three o'clock, six o'clock, <laughs> the 430. So you can see there's quite a bit more M lock going around this hand guard, which lightens it, but also they've changed the profile. It's smaller, so there's not as much material there. So the weight savings is pretty much all over the rifle from the stock to the hand guards to a slightly different barrel profile to the cuts on the upper receiver. All those ounces were shaved off all over the gun, which is really interesting to see. So the two rifles, if you already have a Virtus, is it worth the upgrade to the Spear LT? I mean, that's the only question you can answer for yourself. The map on the Spear LT is $24.99, $2,500. And I wanna say on the original Virtus, it was $21.99. So there's a couple hundred dollars difference there, but that's to be expected with a new product and just the state of the economy globally right now. So it is slightly more expensive, but it is so similar to the original design, it's going to have to be left up to you whether or not you think it's worth the investment. You can easily sell your old Virtus because people out there are having a hard enough time getting the Virtus. People are even going back and trying to buy MCXs if they can find them because there's such a shortage of Virtuses. So if you do find one for sale, rest assured you can easily sell your Virtus to cover the costs of the new Spear if you're lucky enough to find one out there for sale. I hope SIG is able to maybe ramp up production, even though we do have a global shortage of supplies and stuff, and they've won some pretty big military contracts as of late. But I really hope they're able to get these rifles out there to the people because I think for those of you that are looking for something other than an AR, this is the ultimate other option. Let's talk about the accuracy really quick. So in another video, we did some accuracy testing with a bolt action gun, and we talked about this or these two groups being uh, from a firearm that we couldn't talk about. There was an embargo on this new rifle, couldn't talk about it until now. So this was just zeroing the gun with some 55 grain Norma ball, and it's a two inch group, 2.1 inches. So that's, that's really good for a fighting rifle. And then over here was some 77 grain match aiming here. This is where the 55 grain, no changes to the optic, but the group was up here and it's 1.6 inches with the 77 grain. Now this is on a brand new barrel, and so we literally took the gun out of the box, cleaned it, inspected it, looked down the bore, set it up, fired a few rounds, did the accuracy testing. So I would imagine with a little bit more use, generally speaking, we'll either one, find ammunition the gun may like a little bit better, but two, settle that barrel in and those groups may shrink a little bit. So this may very well be like a one and a half inch gun with match ammunition, which isn't bad. Who knows? Maybe we'll even get it to one inches if we put a suppressor on it. We'll find out in a future video. All right, guys, I hope I answered enough questions out there that you guys, guys may have about the new Spear LT and how it compares to the older Virtus and the MCX. If you have any questions, make those or post those questions down in the comment section below. We do try to read those comments for the first couple of days after a video goes live so we can answer some of those questions. We also get ideas for future videos from those comments that you folks make down below. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel so we can continue to bring you content like this, 
this, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. Also, right here on YouTube, you got that little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button, and you can support us here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. And last but not least, please check out Copper Custom. Thank you for 14 years of support. We'll talk to you guys soon.